Hey everyone, so today we're going to be making a proximity growth tutorial and uh, yeah, we want to create a tutorial where we are going to be growing some grass and uh, a few plants on this rock here. And uh, the reason I want to do this animation is because we see this animation a lot in 3D where we have something growing on top of something else. Um, it's also something that can be used quite a lot in the commercial space. So I wanted to share with you how you can do this within Blender. So there has been a lot of tutorials uh, like this one uh, regarding Blender and about the proximity growth. But I wanted to give my take on it and also show you some cool tricks along the way that I actually haven't seen before. So. Just let's dive straight into this tutorial today and yeah, remember to subscribe and all those things and thanks to all of the patrons out there for supporting the channel and uh, yeah, um, it's going well here on the YouTube channel so far so uh, I'm gonna keep sharing tutorials with you uh, whenever I have the time for it. So, in this tutorial today you can see that we have this rug over here on the left side uh, and we have a few instances growing on this rock here. So if I go out of the uh, viewport shading here and I just go to the first frame and hit play, you can see when I play this animation, we have these uh, instances uh, in regard as plants and grass growing on top of our rock. So this is basically what I want to show you today. Uh, and yeah. It makes for a cool shot and for a cool animation that can be used in many different scenarios. So, how we're going to do this is we're going to be using the uh, geometry node setup. And uh, as you can see here, uh, it is quite an easy and small setup. But of course, there is some complexity to it. But I thought the best way to do this was just to go from scratch and make the entire uh, node setup uh, again. So I'm actually going to delete all of the nodes, nodes, just like this. So now we only have the rock. I'm also going to delete this one and I'm going to delete the geometry node setup here. So now we have just have our rock here. And uh, so how are we going to be growing grass on this one? Well, of course, we first have to assign our grass and our plants to the rock itself. So we are going to be instances these as objects onto our geometry here. So we're going to do this in the geometry node setup and I have also thought about how to do this with the vertex map, but I think the geometry node setup here is the easiest way to go about it. So I'm just going to dial this one in here. So under the geometry node, uh, up here, you can click on geometry node, and then we can pick our uh, let me just see our rock here, and I'm going to be creating a new geometry node right here. So, as you can see here, we now have our group input, with, which is our rock, and the group output is still just our rock. So, what we need to do now is that we are going to be creating some sort of you know points on this here. So the first node that we are going to be using is a distribute because we're going to distribute something on our rock. So we want to distribute points and phases and not in volumes because we just want to distribute our points outside on the phases of our rock. So I'm going to be adding this one here. And as you can see over here, we lose our rock, but we get a lot of these points here, as you can see here. So I think in regard to our tutorial here, I think we can, you know, dial down the, the density to just like five maybe, or just like 2.5. We can still see it over here. Um, and we are later going to be using a joint geometry node just so we will get our rock back. But for now, we are just going to be uh, dealing with our instances. So, the next note that we need is that we need uh, an instance on these points. So we're going to be looking after a node called instances on points. And the reason we're going to do this is that we need something instead of the points, so to speak. 
So in regards to this, I actually think I'm just going with an icosphere, uh, just here in the beginning, and I'm plugging this into the instances over here. And as you can see, we get a lot of instances on our rock here. Um, I think we can dial this down even further. Uh, and I also think they are a bit too large right now. So what I also want to do just in case for the future is I want to have some sort of scaling to these instances. So I'm going to be picking a node called scale instances. And besides this, this node here, I'm just going to take the scale and I'm going to plug in a node called value. And this is just a value that will determine the size of our, you know, uh, instances, in this case, these icospheres here. So now we have this set up um, quite easy. And uh, yeah, what do we need now? So we need to switch out these instances with something other than an icosphere. And, but I think first of all, we need to get our rock back. So I'm going to be using a node called join geometry because we want to join different geometries together. So I'm going to be using this and then I'm taking our original input here, our rock, and just joining it with the rest of the things here. So now you can see we have these hypospheres instanced on the rock itself. But this is not all done for now. So now we need to switch our hypersphere out with something else. And if I just go out of this view here, I want to show you that I have imported a few objects here. I have imported some grass, 3D assets, and also a plant over here. And it's just assets that I found online and you can use whatever asset you want. So I'm just going back into this view here. And over here under my grass, I have my meshes here and I have collected them into a new collection called grass. And that's because I can take this collection and I can actually drag it into the geometry node setup here. And then I can take the icosphere, delete this one, and I can actually take our instances or grass and put it into instances and choose pick instances. And as you can see, not a lot of heaven. Uh, that's because I need to separate the children and reset the children. And now we have our grass onto our rock and set it to relative also. But as you might see, we have something not quite uh, realistic yet because our grass is pointing in whatever direction it wants right now. <laughs> so we need to be dealing with these uh, these rotations here. Let me just give it a bit more larger space here. Um, so what are we going to do? We're going to be using a trick with another node called the sample of the nearest surface. And also we need another node, um, which is a line unit to vector. So this will help us align our grass to the normals of the rock's faces. So we also need actually a value called normal here. And this value needs to be put into value and this should be set to vector. And then we need our value into the vector, the bottom vector here. And we'll just add this one again, put it under here. And then we can actually take our um, yeah, what do we call it? Our mesh itself again, because we need to sample these things from somewhere from a mesh up here. And this is going to be this one here. And then we're going to take our rotation into the rotation of our instances. And as you can see, we already have something different happening here. And then I actually think if I go into the top view, the correct for this one is we're going to let me just take this one down a notch. Yeah, just like this. As you can see, let me just tie this one down. Now we have our grass growing out of the correct phases. If I scroll all around this object here, you see it's pointing in the correct direction and you need to play around. I have found out with the uh, align Euler and yeah, to, to, to just specific scene. And also, of course, the different values and sizes of things. You need to play around with the scaling of your entire scene every time because 
yeah, it can affect uh, how your results are not exactly like mine. But this is the way to do it. So now we have actually cre created a pretty nice um, setup. And um, yeah, I think we should just, you know, uh, create just a bit of a better uh, structure here. So I'm just going to add this one up here, this one up here. Um, uh, let's just put this value over here. And then we can maybe take this one up a notch here and this one over here. Yeah, just like this. I'm just uh, titting up this node tree here just to make it more visually uh, pleasing to myself. So right now we have this small group set up here. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to highlight all of these nodes and I'm just going to um, put them into a group with control J and I'm going to be naming this uh, instances one. So it's, it's actually all we need to do to instance these quite nice. And you can see if I go out of this views here, we will have a lot of grass on our object here. And um, I thought it would be fun to also just add in a few plans. And it's actually quite easy. You can just take this group here, duplicate it uh, with Shift D, take it down here. And, you know, let's call this instances two. And instead of uh, the grass collection here, I think we're just going to be adding a whole plant. And just that's just about it. Um, of course, now we also have to take our group input here again, join it with the mesh here and with the mesh here. And we're going to be adding this to the joint uh, geometry node here. And as you can see, uh, we need to separate the children, set it to relative. And now we have a lot of plans also, so we need to be dialing this one even further down. I don't think we need that many, so maybe this should be set to 0 0.25, just like, oh, that's a lot. <laughs> 0 0.2, maybe this should be set to 0 0.2 also, just like this. So now we have a fairly dense and nice setup. I think we need even fewer of these, just like 0 0.03. Oh, 0 0.003 uh, play around with the density here and the density up here just to figure out a nice setup and uh, yeah I think that's about it maybe I'll just turn this one down just for the sake of the animation itself we don't need this many uh, this much geometry uh, because it will slow down of course our computer so now we have uh, the initial setup. If we go into the red dot, red dot view. Um, you can see we have our rock. So what we need now is to make this into an animation. So we're going to be needing something to drive our animation. And we're going to be doing like a form of proximity guide where our proximity determines where there will, where there will be grass and the size of the grass in that particular era. So if I'm going out of this view again, um, we're going to be needing to add a new, uh, yeah, a new node group. And uh, first of all, we need uh, an object. So as you can see here, um, I have an icosphere. Let me just turn this one on and this one on. Uh, under the visibility I have showed it here. So you can see I have just added an icosphere. I set it down to wire and then um, just remember when you render it out you need to turn off the viewport and the renders here so it's not showing up in your final render. Um, and I have animated it so that it goes from this uh, point here and into this point over here um, and you will see why in a minute. So you need to be adding some sort of location transformation to your own object that goes into your um, uh, the, the object itself over here. So under our uh, geometry node setup here, we I'll just turn this one off again, uh, just so we cannot see what, uh, the icosphere itself. But 
we need to be adding our iphosphere into our geometry nodes because we're going to be using this one and then we're going to be creating a proximity node tree and for this we need a few nodes so we're going to be needing a proximity node a geology proximity node we are also going to be needing some sort of position node because we need the position of our um, I, I, our sphere here and then we need a vector math node here which is set to distance because it's the distance from the object itself that we are going to be uh, dealing with and then we are going to be needing a math node which is going to be set to multiply f we're going to be needing one more set to multiply and then we also need a random value as we want some randomization in our um, objects itself and we need to combine all of the uh, different angles uh, with a combined x, y, z but this is actually also just what you need all you need in a way and we have to set the object to relative so I'm taking all of this and then I'm taking the geometry into the target of the uh, geometry proximity the position into this top and the position into this bottom here I'm taking the value to the top and making sure I clamp it and then we're going to be needing the random value down here and the top value up here and we need to add a value to each of these points here and under the float here uh, yeah we can keep it a float and then we just need some sort of value like from 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 just to be adding some random size to our instances and then yeah and then we need the value here to be set to a negative number and I have the experiment with this you need to experiment yourself mine was perfect at minus 0 0.2 and the top value is around I thought it was I think it was around 7.5 and um, yeah and then we actually we can take this one group it and we just need to call this proximity and I'm always grouping and naming and you don't need it but it just makes everything a bit more organized and then we can actually take our combine XYZ here and drag it into the scale up here and as you can see now everything disappeared and we can also do it with this one into the scale down here and now most of it disappeared but what happens now is when I play this one through we will see that it appears depending on our object and just to illustrate you can see here when I play around with the uh, multiply at here uh, I can change how much it is influenced by the proximity I just found these settings to be what worked best for my but and you can play around yourself with these depending on your object object and your scene now it looks a bit uh, Undensed. So I'm just going to be scaling this one up again. Uh, 0 0.5, and uh, maybe this one should be more like 0 0.25. And I also think it did something with the size of our initial plans here. So this is to 0 0.3. So it makes more sense. Um, yeah, now they are a bit bigger. Uh, at zero point like this maybe yeah I think that's nice and also this one up here zero point three and maybe zero point seven five is something that I can work with zero point two just play around with your own scene but this is actually our entire node setup just just this one here and it's actually fairly uh, simple once you get the hang of it and uh, as you can see now when I turn on the viewport shading oh we still have our uh, idosphere over here so I need to be turning this one off for the um, for the uh, viewport here and also the viewport in uh, oh yeah I'm choosing something else right now oh yeah this one here so I I just took our uh, our rug itself before so don't show it in these ones here and uh, yeah then now you will have an uh, 
an animation where we are growing some grass and some plants on this rock here. So thank you very much, everyone, for staying in with this one. I know this was a bit different from the other ones as I used the geometry node setup. But as you can see, it doesn't have to be that difficult. And you can save this geometry node here, uh, the tree setup, and uh, use it for everything uh, you can imagine. Like you can grow anything on anything, basically. Um, so it's just a nice uh, tool to have in your animation and motion graphic uh, tool set and something that uh, will be used a lot in client projects to make something visually interesting. So um, yeah, that's all for today. Um, I hope you learned a ton from this and uh, yeah, just go out and, uh, and grow something grow something on, on anything. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thank you everyone. And thank you for the support and uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye.